Sagan and Jerk were truly horrific. He was slapped, he was slugged, he was beaten, spit on, abused, a ton of thorns forced upon his head. Not just Pilate believed that Jesus had done nothing wrong, but in order to appease the Jewish leaders, in order that Jesus be scourged. The word scourge comes from Latin and means to flay the skin and flesh. Scourge is a type of whip that has a group of cords or leather straps hooked to a handle. It's what made the Roman scourge even more heinous. So it had small lead balls or metal hooks on the end of it on the lashes so that the skin and flesh would be ripped from the body. It wasn't uncommon for victims to be scourged until their bare ribs were exposed. After being scourged, Jesus was forced to carry his heavy wooden cross, carrying a cross on his already raw and bleeding and swollen back. Death on a cross, the crucifixion, until the most excruciating death there is. The first thing is having the spikes driven through the hands and the feet. But that's just the beginning of the terror of the cross. Being suspended by your arms, outstretched arms, cause your, your ribs to cage, your diaphragm to constrict, squeezing the lungs, making it almost impossible to breathe. The heart too becomes compressed, and it has to work extra hard to circulate the blood supply of oxygen throughout the system. A process of slow and suffocation begins. The only way to get any relief suffocation is to shift your body's weight from your arms and to your feet. And it starts another form of agony as the weight of the feet causes the spikes to grate against and tear into the bones of the feet. In crucifixion, the legs of the victim are bent, which means you have to support the weight of your body with the muscles in your thighs and legs. Knees are bent so you can't lock your knees in place. And when it becomes intolerable, you keep the weight on your feet. So the arms again become your support, and the cycle is repeated over and over and over again until you die from either exhaustion, heart failure, or suffocation. The Jewish leaders wanted to make sure that Jesus died before the start of the Sabbath, so the Roman soldiers came to shatter Jesus' shin bones. Without the ability to shift his weight to his feet, he would soon die of suffocation. But they discovered that Jesus had already died, fulfilling the prophecy that a bone of his would be broken. But to make certain he was dead, they pierced his side with a spear. As unimaginable as the physical pain was for Christ, I believe the emotional and spiritual pain he suffered was as great or even greater. The people he came to save <coughs> lied and falsely accused him. They bribed the crowd to demand the release of a murderer instead of the release of a man who offered them love and salvation. He was betrayed by and turned over to his enemies by one of his disciples whom he had lived with, suffered hardships with, and with whom he had shared the secrets of the kingdom of God. And after all he'd done for them and they had witnessed his many miracles, all of Jesus' disciples and dearest friends abandoned him in fear of their own lives as he was prepared give his life for all mankind. On the cross, Jesus took on the sins of the world. The entire sins of the world. Just think about that for just a moment. Think of all the sins you've committed. The ones you have hidden in your heart that are known to you and God. Think of the guilt and shame and remorse you have felt because of your sins. Expand your thinking. Think of our town, our county, our state, the entire world. The remorse, the guilt, and shame of a world of waste and sin. All 
sin is a violation of the laws of God, and unrepentant sin is rejection of God. By turning away from the love and forgiveness of God, long forgiveness. The Bible has made references to the agonies of hell, a place of eternal fire where the worm never sleeps and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The rich man who lived a life of luxury and ease, who in life and ignored Lazarus the beggar who was like outside his gates. When he passed into death, pleaded to Abraham to let Lazarus dip the tip of his finger in water and then come over from paradise and touch his tongue because he's so parched from the fires of hell. It's one of the stories of the tor torments that afflict those in hell. I think that perhaps one of the most active descriptions of hell that I ever heard is that as being in hell is a complete and total separation from the presence and love of God. No matter how vile, repulsive, evil, or unrepentant a sinner is, God is always there, loving them, caring about them, calling out to them, Oh sinner, come home. Come to where there is love, forgiveness, and comfort. God causes the rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. But in hell there is no God, no love, no hope of help, no compassion and mercy, only a feeling of total abandonment, so much of loneliness, and a desperate desire for even the slightest relief of those terrors. All the while knowing that the only thing that can provide relief God is God has withdrawn from you for all of eternity. Jesus had a closer relationship with his father than any worldly parent or child. Jesus and God were one of the same spirit. Jesus lived with God in the glory of heaven before he came to this world as a living sacrifice for the love of his father. And as a sacrifice, he took for us the punishment we deserve. Jesus, a perfect being, his heart and soul were pure, who had never disobeyed his heavenly Father, never broken a commandment, never committed a sin of any kind, was on the cross, instantaneously transformed into the worst sinner of all, for he took the sins of the world into himself. That burden must have crushed his soul more than 500 crush crosses would have crushed his body. Because as he was dying on the cross, God withdrew his companionship, his love, his caring for, and the mercy for his son. And I believe that is why Jesus cried out. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God could have answered, Jesus, it's because you're dying as a sinner. Jesus died in our place as a sinner so we can live and die as one who is innocent. The bread represents his body that was broken for us. The fruit of the vine represents the blood that was poured out for us. And we do this in remembrance of him. Let us pray now. Jesus, we thank you for dying in our place, for paying the price of our sins. You endured and suffered so much for us, that you asked so little in return. You ask only for our love, and that we love, honor, and obey your Father by following his laws. He said, Come unto me, all of you, with heavy burdens, for my yoke is light and easy to carry. He took from us our yoke to carry the burden of sin, and in return you gave us your yoke that carries love, hope, mercy, and forgiveness. You ask the Lord in return because there is nothing we can ever do to repay you. We rejoice in knowing that you are our Savior and Redeemer. 
this God that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. We give thanks and glory.